All right, we're going to look at a couple of examples here, um, evaluating indefinite integrals. One simple, one maybe takes a little bit more work. So remember, what you're really being asked when somebody says find this indefinite integral is, is you're really being asked for an antiderivative, right? This is an anti-differentiation question, right? So when somebody says, what's the indefinite integral of sine x dx, right? And, and remember that, you know, you can think of this as, as dy, and, and what we really want is to find y, right? Uh, we're trying to find the function such that when you take the differential, you get sine x dx, right? So in other words, we're trying to find the function whose derivative is sine x. Okay, well, we still have some of these sitting over here at the board. Um, we know that the derivative of sine is cosine. The other one we know, which we didn't bother to include, it's, it's in here, is that the derivative of cosine is negative sine. And you say, okay, well that's almost what we want, we're just off by a minus sign. Well, that's fine, because remember that we have a constant rule, right? The constant rule for derivatives says if you've got a constant multiple and a minus sign is just a multiple of minus one, right? You can bring that multiple outside, right? So the derivative of minus cos would be the negative of the derivative of cos, and the negative of minus sign is, well, plus sine x. Okay, so now we know that the antiderivative of sine x dx is just minus cos x, okay? But remember, uh, in this indefinite integral, it's not just asking you for one antiderivative, it's asking you for sort of the most general possible answer, which means you put this plus c in there. Um, this constant is sometimes referred to as the constant of integration, because we're thinking about this integration problem, right? Even though it's still not clear what this has to do with integration, because, well, we, we haven't even defined um, integration, right? We just have this notation that we're working with right now. Okay? Now, here's one that maybe you have to think about a little bit more. Um, k e to the kx dx. Um, what do we do with that? Well, if you, and, and here, of course, um, k is some constant, okay? So we think back, think all the way back to the chain rule chapter and think, well, how, what would that have come from? Um, we say, oh, I remember. If, uh, if y is e to the kx, then uh, dy would be k e to the kx times, uh, oops, sorry, times dx. Um, so we have our antiderivative, right? So the answer here, right, there's my y. It's just e to the kx. Possibly plus some constant. Um, now, there, there's one other thing we want to add here, right, which is that, uh, you know, another way that we could have rewritten this is we could have said, you know, in other words, um, dy dx, right, is k e to the kx. Um, and we said, oh, but e to the kx was, was our answer, right? y equals e to the kx. So we have um, k to the times y, all right? Now, uh, I'm pointing this out because this is actually a very fundamental result. If you're in the life sciences, this is going to show up, right? You're going to see this in, in context, right? Um, what, what we have here is we're, we're, you know, if we forget about the middle part and just focus on, you know, dy dx equals k times y, uh, we're saying, okay, so another way to think about what this is asking for is it's, it's asking, can you come up with a function, you know, that is a multiple of its derivative. Or another way to think about this is, is can you come up with a function, can you model a process where the rate of change is proportional to the quantity that you have, right? And there are lots of problems that follow this model, right? Um, radioactive decay is one. Some very basic population models um, might follow that, right? Um, so this gets into this question of exponential growth and decay, right? And 
exponential because, well, the answer is an exponential function. Okay, um, so we're going to see examples like this as we as we move along um, that uh, follow this kind of model. So I thought thought I'd throw this out there now. Um, as you continue on, if you get to the material on, let's say, differential equations, you're going to see problems like this all the time.